Hello there. The latest jobs data from the ONS shows a double whammy of unemployment numbers going up and the number of job vacancies falling. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost and I'm always uploading new content so please do check back daily. The Office for National Statistics published two reports today, one on employment and unemployment statistics and the other on vacancies and jobs. Now it has to be remembered that the employment stats report covers the first three months of the year, January, February and March and the UK lockdown didn't start until the evening of Monday the 23rd of March, although there was a tightening during the two weeks before the lockdown date. The employment stats themselves look good, with joint record employment shown up until the end of March, with a rate of 76.6%. That's 33.16 million people aged 16 or over in employment but unemployment had gone up by 0.1% compared to the same period last year, a rise in the actual unemployed number of 50,000 to 1.35 million. And also bear in mind that this is still a fall of 478,000 compared to five years ago. So overall the message I get from this is that the underlying UK economy was strong, but that the employment and unemployment stats do not yet reflect the full horror of the economic effects of the invisible enemy. But within this report there was also data on the claimant count for the month of April. But bear in mind this is currently an experimental statistic. This set of data, says the ONS, seeks to measure the number of people claiming benefit principally for the reason of being unemployed. And as you can see from this graph, there was a huge surge of 856,500 in the number of claimants in April, taking the number to a tad under 2.1 million. On this, the ONS says that the claimant count increased in all UK regions. The region with the largest monthly increase was the South West, which increased by 97.9% while the West Midlands had the smallest increase of 50.9%. And also remember that this has nothing to do with the furloughed workers, as they are still classed as employed, as are those taking advantage of the equivalent self-employed scheme. They are still classed as self-employed. And that makes for very worrying reading all round, even though, as the ONS does point out, Enhancements to universal credit as part of the UK government's response to COVID-19 mean that an increasing number of people became eligible for unemployment-related benefit support, although still employed. Which means the changes are not wholly to do with unemployment. The next employment report from the ONS is due on the 16th of June, which will probably paint a much gloomier picture. The second ONS report on jobs and job vacancies covers the three months of February to April, so encompasses the first full five-odd weeks of the lockdown. And the ONS reports, There were an estimated 637,000 vacancies in the UK in February to April 2020. This is 170,000 fewer than the previous quarter, and 210,000 fewer than a year earlier. The quarterly fall of 170,000 vacancies is the largest quarterly change since the current time series started in 2001, eclipsing the decrease of 106,000 vacancies in the three months to January 2009. The fall of 210,000 is the largest annual decrease since the year April to June 2009. That means the initial effect of the invisible enemy on the availability of jobs in the UK is the largest since or even larger than that experienced in the credit crunch. And the report also says that employee jobs fell by 13,000 and the number of self-employed jobs rose by 67,000. 
And here's what some of the experts think. Joanne Frew, employment partner at global legal business DWF, commented, Whilst the UK employment rate in the three months to March 2020 was estimated at a record high of 76.6%, 0.6 points higher than a year earlier, the quarterly figures only cover the first week of lockdown. The statistics will almost certainly deteriorate as the true impact of COVID-19 takes effect. And she added... The ONS reports that this is 50,000 more people unemployed than a year earlier. Although a reportable increase in unemployment, the figures do not yet show the true extent of COVID-19. The drop in vacancies across the UK is of concern, with the ONS reporting 637,000 vacancies in the UK in February to April 2020, 170,000 fewer than the previous quarter. The reality will be that those who are unemployed will find it difficult to gain employment quickly in the stagnant job market. And Jing Tiao, senior economist at PricewaterhouseCoopers, said, The latest data shows that the UK labour market remained resilient in the three months to March, with record numbers of people in employment, driven by older workers and more women in full-time work. In addition, while the unemployment rate has seen a slight uptick, it is still low by historical standards. However, social distancing measures implemented in late March to stop the spread of COVID-19 had already begun to exert a drag on labour markets. Job vacancies saw the largest quarterly fall on record in the three months to April. The data also shows that while the employment rate is at a record high, Average actual hours worked fell in March, especially in the last two weeks when lockdown measures were in place. This suggests that employers took early steps by reducing staff hours to cut wage costs without making workers redundant. This trend is likely to continue in the second quarter given the high level of take-up by businesses of the coronavirus job retention scheme. Recent business surveys on the fall in business sales and investment in quarter two suggests that a rise in unemployment is probably inevitable. However, the more that businesses are able to maintain links with their employees, the faster labour markets will be able to bounce back from the crisis, thus preventing more serious scarring effects and a bigger rise in both short and long-term unemployment. The chief UK policy director of the Confederation of British Industry, Matthew Fell, said The data for the first few weeks of the COVID-19 crisis reveal sharp falls in vacancies and hours worked, coupled with soaring benefits claims. While employment shows a smaller decline, pointing to the early success of the job retention scheme, the severe impact of the pandemic on the UK labour market is already becoming clear. Looking ahead, how the job retention scheme evolves in line with restarting the economy will have a big impact on jobs and earnings. Extending it until October was a bold decision, giving businesses and workers medium-term security. Now greater flexibility is needed to help businesses slowly bring people back to work where it is safe to do so. And the invisible enemy is also having an adverse impact on apprenticeships, with the Sutton Trust reporting that 60% of apprentices have lost out on work experience or learning, and that 36% have been furloughed. Also, 8% of apprentices have been made redundant, and 17% have had their off-the-job learning suspended. And it seems that the younger generations are becoming more worried about their futures in this new normal we keep hearing about. The University of Huddersfield reports that Today's young people can be dubbed the coronavirus generation and the pandemic will have a long-lasting effect on their lives, according to a University of Huddersfield lecturer who has helped analyse the data from a research project that aimed to appraise the impact of the virus on UK youth. Findings include statistics which show that more than 90% of young people were stringently observing the lockdown and that 80% of them are seeking news not from social media but from traditional outlets, including ministerial briefings. 
and the university's reader in politics, Dr Andrew Mycock, said... We assume that the young have rejected these traditional forms of media, but the research shows that they don't feel secure in navigating the social media world of fake news. Many young people are using traditional media, maybe for the first time, because they can consume it with a certain amount of reliability. Hmm. The young turning away from social media to traditional media and ministerial briefings, eh? Does that mean they're now trusting the Tories while soaking up socialist anti-Tory mainstream media bias? Well, it probably means they are quickly becoming more serious as the repercussions caused by the invisible enemy become clear. Many will be realising that their prospects under the new normal might not be as rosy as they had previously been expecting. But they should count the one blessing they do have which is that age is on their side. For those in the older age brackets who lose their jobs over these months, they will probably find it very hard, if not impossible, to recover their financial position. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it. So what do you think about all this employment and unemployment? Please share and comment and thank you for watching.